What's up, YouTube? I finally got my Elix 12 Mega, the Elix 12 SI shirt Mega. It's critical that if you want to have Mega right now, you get a 12 with SI on the down imaging. If you just get an Elix 12 DI, uh, you won't get the Mega. The Mega comes with the transducer. That's with the SI. And I want to jump quickly. If you're looking at, for information on how to install the transducer, click to part two right now. This part will be how to install the head unit, how to wire it properly so you do not have interference so I'm gonna install and you're gonna follow me I'm gonna install the Elix 12 SI first at the front and then I will show you how to, how to rig it at the console so let's see what's in this box I've already pre-opened this box and last year I've already uh, I had an Elix 12 so I know what's in there the only difference is the transducer and the transducer bracket so we'll open this one and then here you get all your hardware the new transducer for the Mega, which has a separate transducer built in for the DI, which is great. So you get good quality image. I have my bracket here. I have my gimbal mount and I have my screws and a transducer plate. Again, if you're looking for information on how to set it up, your transducer properly, click to part two. And my power cable. I have my booklets. I have my CD for Humminbird PC. Very familiar with them, so we won't need this now. This is for later. And here's the unit. Um, I was lucky enough, I had a KVD edition last year and they had red markings on it, which I really like. The case is made of uh, rubber, which is really great. It uh, comes off easily and here's your, here's your unit. Nothing different compared to the uh, last year's edition of the Elix 12. The, like I said, the only thing different is the transducer. So we'll get this mounted onto my ram mount for the front. I'll show you the step-by-step -step on, on how to install it electrically wise so you do not get interference or minimal interference. Okay, I've ran my cables from the main battery and this is what the important part. You want your all your electronics to run from the main battery. The reason why is if you hook up your electronics to the trolley motor batteries, every time you're gonna press on the pedal, you're gonna send interference through your, your fish finder. Just rig it separately on the main battery. So positive and negative, I ran my wires already last year. And you see how big those wires are? Those are 10 gauge wires. The reason you want to be using 10 gauge wires, uh, less restricted flow of energy uh, of the electricity to go to your hummingbird, and there'll be less interference uh, going through those wires. You wanna rig those wires on the opposite side of your trolling motor wires. Why? Because your trolling motor wires, as I said, will carry interference and electricity through. If you put them on the same side, you will have interference when you're running your trolling motor. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hook this up. I wanna show you how to hook it up properly so you do not have issue. In the so what I need to do is I need to hook up my power cable through the boat. So I'm gonna go ahead, so I'm gonna run my power cable where I need it to go through, where my wires are going through. So I got everything. Uh, I got my wire through and I got my positive and negative. Positive is the yellow one. I'm just gonna clean this end here. I'm trying to show the camera what I'm doing here. I'm sure you guys know how to do this anyway. Clean the positive off the negative and the negative. Twist them up a little bit so they don't come and poke me. So what I'm gonna do this time is I have heat shrink tubes. I run it through one of my cable and I'll do the same for the positive. It's critical that you follow those steps. You can go ahead and twist those wires together and shrink wrap them or use electric tape. Believe me, you'll have moisture, you'll be fishing in the rain, you'll be leaving the boat in the garage where it's a, there's a bit moisture, or you'll be leaving the boat outside. And these things, once they're connected with just electric tape or heat shrink, they'll get corroded over time because electricity will attract corrosion and you will have a bad signal. You'll wonder why your fish finder's not working, shut down on you every time you hit a wave. So by this way I'm doing it right now, you won't have this issue. What I'll be doing is I'll be soldering them together. Uh, another trick that you can do is use dielectric grease, twist them together, put silicone on top of it, and then put the heat shrink. That's really good. And if you do it with a soldering gun, you won't, you'll never have an issue. Stay away from the quick connectors. Again, these will get disconnected. These will have corrosion in it. You'll have issues. Stay away from the cheap way of doing it. You spend a lot of money on your fish finder, do it properly. Again, I'm no electrician, but when it comes to fish finders and stuff like that, I'm, I'm really in tune into it. I know what's needed. I just want my ends to be a bit longer, the unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap those together. Now that they're wrapped together, I'm gonna grab the solder gun and I'm gonna solidify these two together. Now that I've soldered them together, I've put my shrink wrap over it. You take your heat gun. 
I want to give you two tricks that will really help you. A lot of people will complain or have complained that the hummingbird shuts off as they're riding, they're hitting waves, so small waves, small bumps, or it's shutting off by itself. I love hummingbird, but this could have been improved a while back. The power connection here, and as you can see, I use medical tape or hockey tape to go around this connection. What will happen is your power cable will be more sturdy on here and it, it, it won't be as loose and believe me that will fix your issue 99% of the time people are blown away when I show them this trick other trick we have our transducer cable here is ferrite rings um, they're sort of a magnet rings and what they'll do is you put it around your transducer cable and you wrap it as much as possible and this transducer uh, cable is much thicker than the other one so I'm only going to be able to go once through what this ferrite ring will do it will take away all electricity static going around the cable from the troll motor before sending your data to the unit so you'll have clearer picture less interference so ferrite rings are very important and they're key to helping you having less uh, interference so what you do is you you wrap it here twice and as you can see this fire ferrite rings too small compared to the, the cables we used to have they were much smaller so i'm only able to do one turn with this and that's not good enough what i'll do is i'll get bigger ferrite rings I'll try to put a link in the video on, on where you guys can get those they're fairly cheap they're like a dollar each well worth it i've got it installed into the bracket here fairly simple power ethernet cable transducer that's all i need no uh, gps required as it's built in into the unit so i'm gonna go ahead and close this I've put my ferrite ring around here since I don't have the big one enough so I'm gonna have to order one so that I'll be able to wrap around but this shall do for now. So don't don't use a drill to do this or you'll crack it. So I'm solid here. My connection will be good. I can go ahead and test it on the unit. I got the unit here. I got my, my tape there and that's how she goes. Now as to how I'm going to mount this. I have my RAM mount. What you'll find is if you have, with the Elix 9 and up, even 7, they're pretty heavy. You know, when you're going in waves, you want a solid RAM mount. So I'm using the big one mount. I think that's the 101. What you'll see with the gimbal mount they're giving you now, the, it won't, the holes won't align. So you'll need to drill holes like I did on here. You can see I drilled holes to match the pattern of the gimbal mount. Uh, I found two holes on the other side that were already matching. And we're going to go ahead and secure this together for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna move this here. I wanna show you guys. I got everything plugged. Everything's back in place from me taking it out from the spring because I sold my older units. I wired through everything. You saw me do this. I installed my RAM mount. It's solid. So let's plug in the unit. This is where my unit's gonna come uh, for easy reading when I'm on the water. And prior, so you need to solve things. I'm moving the boat and the camera. I'm gonna grab my wires, make sure I got the long enough wires, plug it in securely. I'm secured, I heard the two clicks. I'll take this off and it should be. Unit is plugged in. Now, if you do want uh, technical information on how to set it up and all the options, I have videos on my, that I'll link below. How I set it up, all the settings, no fish ID, um, how to get better data and get better image out there. So. I'm not going to do this now, this is just an install, so this is rigged, now we're going to go rig the console. I just got to shrink it, so heat gun, a lighter will do as well. Um, make sure you get the good shrink wrap, there's some cheap ones that, uh, that starts cracking over time. So I just use the heat gun like this, I'm pretty sure you guys used this before. So I got my ferrite rings installed on the on the transducer cable. They're not installed the right way. I should have bigger ferrite rings so I can wrap it multiple times inside the hole. This will do. Now I got my power cable, my ethernet cable, my transducer cable, and we'll go ahead and plug them in here and my unit will be ready to be plugged in. All right, so we're gonna install the unit. I have my RAM mount, as you notice, I cut it here. I repainted it so it doesn't bang on here. It's going a bit further, just gives me some leg room. This season, I'll be fishing like this, but as the season go through, I might move this unit here and, and just delete this one. So I take my ear bolts, I call them, put them on the side, and there you have it. So your unit is installed. This is how I'd want it, right there. Remember, the tape on the power connector really helps. When you're in wave from it stops the unit from turning off turn this on we got power so these units are ready to go more than pump to try these things hope you enjoyed subscribe comment if you want to see more of these and part two will be coming next week i'll have a link below once it's out how to rig your transducer thanks guys